Welcome to the Laughing Horror News Show, brought to you by the Laughing Horror Podcast. Today is May 7th, and here are your horror headlines from over the past weekend. Corey Barlog let fans of the God of War series know via Twitter that they could expect gore from the upcoming game, and states this is due to the game taking place in a very violent time. This isn't anything the franchise has shied away from in the past, but it sounds like they may be attempting to take it to a new level come this next installment. Release details are not as of yet available, but more information is expected to be revealed come next month at the E3 convention. Creator of the Final Destination franchise, Jeffrey Ruddick, with Steven Todorkis, have created a TV pilot for a series entitled The Feed, which have been picked up by Hood River Entertainment. From the looks of things, the show, at least for the first season, will be based off of cyberbullying and its use having created an online presence which is deemed evil. The pilot has not as of yet been filmed, but I'm hoping that this one gets picked up as the concept does sound pretty cool. Fox has ordered a pilot based on the vampire book trilogy, The Passage, which is written by Justin Cronin. According to Dredge Central, the studio had gotten the rights to the series in 2007 prior to the first book even having been completed and are now attempting to have it made into a series. The following synopsis is from the first book, in the series, which is provided by Indigo.ca. As civilization crumbles, two people flee in search of sanctuary. FBI agent Brad Walgus is a good man haunted by what he's done in the line of duty. Six-year-old orphan Amy Harper Belafonte is a refugee from the doomed scientific experiment, and Brad is determined to protect her. But for young Amy, escaping is only the beginning of a much longer odyssey, spanning miles and decades towards the time and place where she must finish what should have never begun in the first place. The sick and twisted Serbian film, which includes the scene we do not mention, is getting an ultimate director's cut, which is said to come with an an additional five minutes of film footage and over 60 hours of behind-the-scenes footage and special features. If you've not heard of this film, here's the synopsis. A Serbian film probes the life of Milos, a retired adult film star. Milos is lured out of retirement by a deep-pocketed director seeking to take an ultimate arthouse triple X film. What follows is the most depraved cinematic storytelling of a moral and political allegory ever seen. Consider yourself warned. As of yet, the release date has not been provided, but uh, once that does become available, you can be sure to find that here. During the Texas Frightmare Convention, the new look to some of the old Puppet Master dolls, including one newbie, have been revealed. Luckily, Dread Central was able to provide fans with pictures of the updated dolls. Personally, I'm not liking the new look for Blade as he just looks depressed while Tunneler looks like he went from fat to needing help with an eating disorder. And finally, their newest addition, the Happy Amphibian, which looks like a dead frog dressed like a clown. Um, slightly ridiculous and slightly depressing, but I will reserve judgment for after a viewing of the film. Todd McFarlane has given fans an update regarding his Spawn script. The original script, having been roughly 180 pages, has been whittled down to 140, but McFarlane is aiming for a two-hour screenplay, which typically runs around 120 pages. Still a bit of work has to go into this, but once it is complete, we will be able to see him progress to the next level, which would likely be funding. I'm looking forward to see how he plans to do this, as if he decides to try a crowdfunding method, it'll be interesting to see how fans react and aid in getting the film off the ground. McFarlane also commented that the film will be touching into the horror genre as well as delve into the suspense and uh, supernatural entities as well. And in my favorite news story from this weekend, the Amityville The Awakening movie, which has had its release pushed back consistently since 2014, had released a new poster, which it had uh, released in the UK in order to promote the film. As it looked pretty cool, most news sites had posted it. Of course, someone figured out that the picture in question on the poster was stolen directly from the poster for the possession experiment. Lucky for us, uh, Dread Central released the side-by-side and it's blatantly obvious that the possessed girls seen on both uh, both posters are not only the same girl, but it's the exact same picture. I'm personally waiting to hear what the studio has to say for Amityville. And, you know, this is highly unprofessional, so hopefully they've got one hell of a reason for having done this. 
And that's all that we've got for you today, folks. If you'd like to check out the podcast or any of our social media pages, you may do so by checking out the links provided in the description below. Thank you all for tuning in to the Laughing Horror News Show, and we shall talk to you once again on Wednesday.